Coleman, just what's the key to gutting out a, a game like that that doesn't seem to be going your way and maybe isn't the prettiest at all times? Uh, I'd say defense and rebounding. As long as you can get stops, you know, if the ball's not going in, um, you know, the, the energy develops on defense when you're getting stops, and then you'll eventually see the ball go in. Um, and late game free throws as well is a, is, is a big part. Uh, you got to you gotta uh, gut up and, uh, and make – free throws down the stretch and and that's what we did tonight so question for either of you guys so uh draven you guys talk about a lot about his practice and how he you know scores really well can you talk about just his mindset of just draining that big shot tonight um i'm sure he's uh he's fearless uh i'm sure he uh you know he's he's been waiting on his moment um but you know that that comes with being a freshman uh, so no, he's, he's fearless though. Uh, so he went out there and got his opportunity and, and hit a big shot for us, gave us a boost. So no, he's, he's fearless. So salute to him. I guess, you know, for both of you, but Coleman, you mentioned, um, just made leaning on defense and rebounding. How do you not let maybe you know, a rough night offensively kind of trickle over onto that side of the ball? Um, I think it's just like the effort, like trying to control what you could control. Like, I mean, obviously for me, like my shots weren't going in, uh, but I tried to try to just stay focused mentally and lock in on my assignment. You know, I was trying to be down there and help people and fight the post and do as much as I can and uh, just just have attention to detail, really, because, uh, you know, we can control what we do on defense. So. Luke, is there something they were doing defensively that made life a little tougher for you guys on offense, or is it just a matter of you guys missing shots? What did you see there? Yeah, I thought we got great shots uh, in the first half. We started out kind of slow. Um, I mean, but we were getting good looks, even myself. I started out 0 for 3 on wide open shots that I usually make. So um, I think, you know, when we get looks like that, um, you know, it's just you just got to play good defense. If shots aren't falling, that usually do fall. And IU threw a little bit different of a package at us. They uh, brought the double from the low side sometimes, so we had to adjust to that, um, cutting different guys, sliding to different areas, and we kind of got, got used to that throughout the game. But, uh, you know, they're a good team. They got good players, good defensive players, and, uh, you know, they were able to throw us off a little bit, but throughout the game we were able to figure it out. For, for both of you, where would you say this team is at? Mentally, right now, with you, know, with all that the team has gone through with Terrence and a couple of Big Ten losses, Maryland, Northwestern, would, would you say you're in a good place uh, mentally? Yeah, I think we're great. Um, you know, everybody in the locker room is is here for the right purpose, and we're ready. We're ready for what we have ahead of us. It's been a long stretch in January, nine games in January. Uh, we've been going two day prep into a game and one day prep into travel into a game, and we've been doing that now for what twenty days. Um, so we got a lot of guys in the locker room that are prepared to take on that challenge and, uh, you know, a lot of guys that are out there for each other and for the right reasons. So um, I'm excited to keep going. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, um, the team is just uh, like it's a it's a long stretch. So I, I, obviously the team's going to get a little tired. But, um, you know, we come out and compete every day at practice, uh, although we're tired and we know we got to do it. Uh, give our best every game too, because um, every win counts. Uh, so does every loss. So we we try to just go out and compete as hard as we can, and and everyone's mentally locked in and and focus on that one common goal. As Coleman Luke is hitting three pointers like he has been over the last month or so, like what does that do for you guys offensively, and how big of a momentum turn can some of those threes be? Uh, yeah, no, it's big time. Uh, you know, it gets the crowd going, it gets him going, uh, it makes. The other team, you know, think about what 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 kind of package they're in. Um, if they can, you know, heavy help like they were tonight, um, change some lineups around. Um, no, it, it it affects all of us really when you know Luke seeing the ball go in, giving him confidence. Um, so no, I I trust Luke every time he shoots the ball, um, and no, it, it it helps us out a lot for sure. Luke. For Look for the wings defensively. Was this just a tough kind of unique prep in the sense that you could leave your guy a little bit more, um, especially if they threw it in the post than you normally would? 
Yeah, that's a great question, actually, because I think we needed to come off of our guys a little bit more. Um, one of the big things at halftime was, you know, co coach keeps saying how Coleman's every night kind of overmatched in terms of like weight, just straight up weight. I mean, he's giving up 30 to 40 pounds a night against, you know, bigger guys. So we have to be better at helping him. You know, I think you see the numbers that opposing bigs have and um, you, you can kind of tend to blame Coleman, but it's not him at all. It's all the other guys. And that's kind of what we've been um, talking about in the locker room and what we have to get figured out. And uh, credit to them. They got downhill. Uh, you know, they were able to make some tough shots. I thought, uh, you know, they got downhill and hit a couple tough ones. And that's credit to them. But uh, like I said, you know, we need to be better with the scout and help out Coleman more because he's fighting down there for 30 to 40 minutes a game against guys that are bigger. Yeah, for Luke, um, you, you mentioned you missed your first um, three open shots and you got kind of got in a rhythm with some contested shots. As a shooter, you know, how do you work through that? I mean, is it just next, next shot up is, is going down or is there any mindset like, well, I'm, I'm too too open, so uh, you think about it or it's just? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Uh, you know, my worth on this team is – being able to guard and rebound, but hit shots. That's really that's really my worst. So uh, every single day I put in shots before practice, um, make sure I get in my routine, do extra shots before shoot around. And that mentally, I mentally know now that I can take those shots and I, I prepare enough, I prepare myself enough for moments like that and shots like that. So if the first three don't go in, if the first 10 don't go in, I'm gonna be ready to shoot those next shots. This is for both of you guys. Coleman, maybe you could start. Just Terrence came up with some clutch free throws, rebounds late. What's the key to reintegrating him and getting him comfortable offensively back in the fold? Uh, I think just being patient. Uh, I think tonight, uh, and not just him, I think he's just kind of like we're trying to rush into things, like just quickly drive the ball, like just try to we're, – we're too sped up, I think. So I think it's just slowing down. Letting offense come naturally to us, uh, I think that's a big thing for him as well. Uh, and then, um, you know, getting those stops because when we get out in transition, we pitch the ball head to him. Uh, it's either a foul or a layup. So uh, for him, I'd say locking locking people down, uh, focusing on defense, uh, and we get those stops. And you know, he's he's an elite defender. Uh, he's an elite defender, but uh, I think right now he's not necessarily struggling. But he's obviously, you know, he hasn't. Um, been guarding and doing movement for a month now. So, um, you know, he has to his work, work his way back to becoming that elite defender as well. So, yeah. And, uh, I, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I did it last year. It's, it's really, it's really tough to be out of Big Ten play um, and come back and have to play. You know, we're a little bit different in the sense of what we do. So uh, he's, you know, got to get his feet back under him. But we as teammates know what he's capable of. He was an All American and still is All American talent. And we know what he, he means to our team. So uh, having him back, getting his feet under himself and um, us giving him, the confidence that he needs to be able to sign is uh, what we're going to continue to do. And I have no doubt that he's going to get back into it and um, really start to start to sign. Luke, the, the driving layup and you got fouled on that play. This, it, it seemed like it took Indiana by surprise a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Does yeah. it show you and maybe future opponents that you can, you can be a little bit more than a spot up shooter? Yeah. Yeah. Something I've, you know, tried to integrate into my game this year is the pump fake side step three. And, I've done that a lot this year, and, you know, today I saw the lane wide open, and, uh, you know, I don't usually do it, but I drove the ball and finished, and I looked over at Tyler Underwood and had some choice scores for him because he gets mad at me in practice at any time I dribble the ball. So that was, yeah, kind of a funny part in the game. So Coleman, you were just kind of looking at Luke when he – like, is, is that a part of his game that you're familiar with? Or are you not familiar with that? I'm, I'm just messing with him. Now, Luke can score the ball very well. Uh, he just kind of moves a little slow. <laughs> Like he's just like a little stiff, but no, nah, I've seen Luke score at all levels. Uh, you know, he obviously he has to make sacrifices and play within our offense, but you know, I play an open gym and stuff like that. I've seen Luke score in multiple ways. So yeah, no, I'm just messing with him. Luke, can you speak to kind of how your mentality or, or, you know, pregame routine kind of changes now being the first guy off the bench instead of starting is it, does it change at all for you? Yeah, just a little bit in terms of minute distribution, I would say. Um, you know, with Terrence back, he's playing big minutes, and that kind of brought mine down, which I understand. That's, you know, what, what I'm here for. I'm ready to make those adjustments. And, you know, it's the same mindset, though. I get ready before the game the same exact way, have my pregame routine the same exact way. And, 
you know, it's all mental. It's you got to be ready to go whenever your name is called. You know, when I was starting um, for that period of time, it was the same preparation, the same mindset, you know, next shot's going in. I'm going to get up and do my routine every day and do all the things I need to do to be successful. And it's the same thing now. So just being ready to go every day, regardless of the situation that I'm in and, you know, kind of how much I'm playing and what I need to do, um, especially coming off the bench. You know, I, I think bench contributors are one of the biggest things, one of the biggest difference makers. And, you know, we have a bunch of guys that can come in and make a difference. You know, Dre today, um, Dane had some good minutes today. Uh, Nico has been good when he's been in and, you know, Justin can be special. So just having that off the bench, I think is huge. Luke, you said earlier in the week that your brother was going to be here, guy who goes to IU and some of his friends. Uh, you got anything to say to those guys and how'd that one feel? Yeah, I, I'm going to uh, save the trash talk for personal between us, but uh, through our text messages, but I'm going to go out and give him a tough time. My brother brought friends today and I told him no IU gear in the family section. So that was one of the big things. But um, to get a win against IU, especially a home state team, is uh, it's special. It means a little bit more every year. So it's good to get a win.
Well, we went from a uh, probably more eye-pleasing loss at Northwestern from a fan standpoint and probably y'all standpoint and uh, to a very, very ugly W. And uh, really proud of our guys because you have to win these games. You have to, you have to find a way. And um, they had um, uh, a unique, I think, day. Um, if you want to talk analytics, um, toss a possible points. Derek, what's it called? Points possible. That's it. If you total up all the field goals, all the threes, all the free throws in the game, we're plus 34. That probably means we didn't have great offense. But um, when you don't shoot threes and make them, uh, they were over. Uh, it's one of the one of our big philosophical deals. It becomes very hard to win. I think they had two shots outside of 10 feet, maybe, that they made. Um, in a game that we didn't shoot the ball particularly well, um, and we didn't guard very well, to be very honest, um, at times. So, uh, Lucas, uh, Luke Goody, huge, huge day. Um, elite. Um, his rip drive baseline was something that will go on the film at the end of the year. Um, but he made threes. Uh, he got some good looks. Um, you know, Justin was plus 24. Um, I thought his his shot, obviously, at the end was a big one. Um and then I thought that that in a lot of ways we got Terrence going a little bit at the end. Six rebounds. Um, you know, he's, we haven't had a lot of practice time with him. Um, he, you know, he's holding the ball too much. I actually set him for a long period of time today. Uh, but, um, you know, I felt really good about the way he finished the game. I ran a, a little play for him at the end of the game, isolation to get fouled. And... Um, uh, and then Quincy was 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 um, a little off today, and um, you know Luke was playing great, and it's a nice luxury to have that. And uh, you know I thought Marcus is, uh, you know he was our Luca, so to speak, He's do, doing just about everything, and um, was was a rock again. And ten rebounds is is a is a big day for him. And you know when you tell your guards to rebound, he literally takes it to personal and, and goes and does that. So, um, but, uh, ugly win and give Indiana a lot of credit. I thought they played extremely hard on the defensive side and, and, um, had something to do with, with, with us missing shots, but, uh, uh, we'll sure take it today. Brad, you seem to get a lot of, um, you know, offensive rebounds, a big part of what you do, but it seemed to be in spurts today. When you made your runs, you were attacking the offensive glass, and other times guys were just standing and watching. How do you get them to do that for 40 minutes? Practice. Put them on the treadmill. Um, I. It's just one of those deals. You, we emphasize it. We work on it. We have a drill we do every single day. I think it shows our, our, our uh, aggressiveness. Um, I thought our aggressiveness today guarding the basketball was – was as bad as we've had. Um, I just thought we were passive today, um, but we did turn it up at times. And and it obviously was Draven Gibbs had a big three. Uh, Coleman got a big tip in and one. Uh, you know we can't be selective when we go. If we're if we're starting to do that, then we're we're setting ourselves up. Brad, I know you wanted him to rebound more, and Terrence got those at the end, hits his free throws. But what'd you see before that? Like, how do you feel like he's acclimating back? Because Luke slowly. Talking- yeah. To be very honest, slowly. And and but I thought he's it's really hard. You guys have no idea who never played. It's so hard to you can't be out a month. And it's so hard. And and the the you know, we were the the flow offensively, we've got to find. We've got to we've got to have a great dummy day here the next day or two where the where he's not holding the ball. Terrence, when he's effective, is 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 driving it. That sets up his three. Um, and he's, and, and, and we're holding the ball too long. We're just holding the ball. Too, he's holding it too much. And, um, you know, we've, we've got to, we've got to help him there. We got to help. But I, I felt like late, you know, he was emotionally in the right place. And that's, that's the most important thing. I thought he was tough. He wanted the ball. He wanted to make free throws. And, and that was, that was good. 
Coleman talked about maybe just leaning into defense and rebounding when the offense is not what you want. But what's what's the challenge in not letting maybe shots not falling trickle into the yeah, it's mental. Side? We all have we all have feel good moments, right? You guys all write about the guy who scores, right? You know, it's the lead is big, you know, Damask was double double leads, you know, am I calling the title right? It's all about scoring. No one's gonna lead the fact that, you know, somebody's had five steals. I haven't seen that column yet. So it's a feel good thing for them when they when they make a basket and the, the crowd cheers and everybody goes up. Nobody's it's not like that on the defensive side. Defense is guts and grit, fight and and all the all the nasty stuff that that nobody wants to talk about. And um, you know we've we've had that most of the year, um, and we had it at times today. But but that's got to become that's 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 our standard. That's who we are, and we gotta we gotta start start doing that but we're again we're in the middle of 16 days in a row coach and correct me if i'm wrong it seemed like the plan on renault was to uh dig with the wings and the guards on him did, did they execute that the way you wanted and what was their consideration to doubling him no we threw we won because we didn't give him threes and baco is leading the league in threes uh three point percentage and um what we wanted to do was give him different looks and, and you know, Coleman's really, really good. He got up 12 attempts. That's it, 12. And, and we're, we're, we're really good with that. Uh, where I didn't think we did a very good job today was um, when, when he did miss, we, met, we gave up some second, opportun- second chance opportunities. So um, the game is imperfect. You're going to give up something. These guys are really, really good players. And and so you play the percentages, you play the odds, and 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 that's 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 what our our stuff's based on. Yes. Brad, um, Ty was really effective in the first half. Only got five minutes in the second half. Is that kind of like you said, Justin Harmon was plus twenty four? You're trying to work TJ back into it, or is that or is some combination? We said him a long time. We said TJ a long time as well. And and again, it's 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 a feel thing. Justin was being effective. He was he was creating some havoc on the defensive side. Luke was playing really, really good. We had a combination of guys out there that caused them some problems on the defensive side because of spacing. Um, and and again, that was – I guess that's a nice thing of having some depth. I love what Ty's doing. And uh, probably had an opportunity to go back to him a, l- a little bit early and give Marcus a blow. But, uh, again, there was some ebb and flow and timeouts that I felt pretty good about Marcus. Brad, how do you balance the the scouting report initially with what a team is doing on a current day or night? Like Indiana is, goes over nine from three, but I'm sure you didn't tell them they can't, they can't make it. You know, going in, we set goals every game of of what we want to do based on their personnel and how we're scheming of what we want, we, what what we want that game to look like. Today was three or fewer three or fewer threes. It's pretty unrealistic to think you're going to get zero in a 40 minute college basketball game. It's really really hard to do. I think we did it. We do it against Michigan. We, Michigan State. I think last year. That's that's what we do, okay. And 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 so we don't set out to be perfect at it because we know it's an imperfect game. But we set out with goals and ideas. We talk about those things, and uh, you know those are those are focal points for our guys to 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 worry about. Brad, so you spoke about the big three pointer that Draven hit. Um, Obviously, he gave a good spark there in the second half. What was your message to him after the game? I love you because he works hard every day. He's the other team's best player most days. And and believe me, when we have him and Sincere at the guard spots on the scout team, oh, talk about freakishly athletic and Bucks getting really good and working really hard. But um, it's very hard to do what Draven's done and, and keep his confidence. He is an extremely positive young man. He is an extremely hard worker. Uh, he's in there every day with Chester and TA and our coaches working, getting his shots up. And uh, uh, a day like today goes a long way uh, for for my confidence in, in what he does. And then he guarded the ball, and he guarded it without fouling. Brad, you mentioned maybe not having the toughness at the point of attack defensively. Who are you looking to to get some more bite there? Every one of them. Uh, we talked all night, Derek, about – ball pressure, just simply ball pressure, throwing the ball into Malik. We were three feet off of him. And and 
when there's a low postman, there's nowhere to drive. And, and yeah, we're, we're, we're just soft. We were just soft on the ball and that's, that's not good. That's not who we, that's not who we are. It's not what we've been. And, and, um, you know, we had a, I think Zet X drove the ball baseline in front of their bench. We just stood outside the paint on the other side and didn't rotate. We haven't done that all year. And, you know, it was Terrence. And I, I think in that, in that moment, and, but we got to rotate. And those are those are those are things that that can't happen. Those are mistakes that can't happen. You mentioned Luke's uh, three point play, uh, made the old fashioned way, being a, made a highlight at the end of the year. Is can he do that more, or do you see? I mean, he talked about his value of just making shots, jump shots. But where do you kind of see his is his approach there? Luke's got a tremendous shot fake. I mean, and and we work a lot with you know, shot fake sidestep for a three. And and yet Luke's quietly got a really good hard to guard post game because he can he can fade away and shoot it and he can shoot it off balance. Uh, his dribble drive game's not what I would call exceptional. It's probably a little better than yours. Um but um but it, it was the right play at the right time and and the the seas parted and he shot a layup. Thank you.